What's on your bucket list, those things you're dying to do, places you're desperate to see before you pop your clogs? For me, one of the things that's on my bucket list, and I did in 2017, was the Everest Base Camp Trek. Welcome back, it's Eddie here. Yes, and this video, I have put together a, a video of the trek I did, Everest Base Camp Trek, seven years ago as a kind of a 50th birthday present to myself in January 2017. Oh my God, I can't believe it's seven years ago. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. It's a little bit different to videos I've put together because back in 2017, I wasn't really into videography. I wasn't a content creator. And the video function on my phone was still a little bit scary to us, although I have got plenty of video footage of the trip. So I've hodgepodge the video together in certain parts, but I'm sure you're going to absolutely love it. And if something like the Everest Base Camp Trek is on your particular bucket list, or somewhere on your radar or in your peripheral vision for to do at some time in the future in your life, I'm sure you're going to find some nuggets um, some great information in this particular video that will help and motivate, inspire you and to give you some information about what the trip's actually like. So, I hope you enjoy the video. Also included in it is some little snippets of the four weeks uh, volunteer work I did with little kids in Pokhara, which was after the Everest Base Camp Trek. And if you want us to do another separate video on that, just let us know in the comments below. So yes, I'll crack on with the video. I hope you enjoy it. Please be patient and uh, namaste. The Everest Base Camp Trek is an 80 mile, 128 kilometre round trip, starting and finishing at Lukla and takes you through the stunning Kumbu Valley of the Himalayas. Here you will be surrounded by monster peaks, suspension bridges and the most stunning scenery you're ever likely to see. The whole trek will take you anywhere between 11 and 14 days with the majority of that being the trek to Everest Base Camp itself as there will be a couple of acclimatization days thrown in. My itinerary in January 2017 was a 12 day trip, eight of those trekking from Lukla to Everest Base Camp. Your Everest Base Camp trip adventure however starts when you arrive in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. Kathmandu is a sprawling city of around one and a half million inhabitants. Around 40% of its working age population is unemployed and with no functioning welfare state it is very poor with people learning to survive and feed themselves through strong community relationships and a lot of creativity. I found the Nepalese people to be very warm and friendly. The city is also near a natural fault line and is susceptible to occasional earthquakes. 2015 and 2023 being the most recent and notable with a huge loss of many lives and the destruction of city infrastructure. I'd highly recommend spending at least a couple of nights in Kathmandu before setting off on the trek in order to have a look around and experience its amazing culture. It is fair to say that walking around Kathmandu is an assault on the senses, the smells, the noises, especially vehicle horns, and the sights are amazing. It's fast paced and never seems to stop moving. The Tamil district of Kathmandu is popular for tourists and definitely worth a look around. This is where you can try the local cuisine, cafes, bars, and with an abundance of outdoor shops, stock up on kit or clothing for your upcoming trek. I'd also recommend visiting the Pashu Patanath Temple. It sits on the Bagmati River, which ultimately joins the Holy River Ganges. It is used daily for cremations, and only Hindus are allowed on the temple grounds. As a tourist, you'll be able to watch proceedings on the opposite side of the riverbank, and I can say that it is an unbelievable must-see experience. If you get time, I'd also recommend the Swayambunath Monkey Temple visit. Your Everest Base Camp Trek will start with a flight from Kathmandu to Lukla's Tenzing Hillary Airport. This is where your adventure really begins. Lukla Airport is regarded as the world's most dangerous airport and if you ever get to fly there you'll understand why. It's basically a landing strip on the edge of a very high cliff flanked by 7,000 metre peaks. With you you'll have your trekking day sack and a large hole doll or similar no heavier than 10 kilograms and this will be carried by your porter from point to point. I had booked my trip through a company called Global Vision International GVI. 
It was a six week trip during January and February of 2017, with a month of doing volunteer work in a city called Pakara after the Everest Base Camp trek. For this reason, I'm unable to pass on what the component costs were for the trek itself, and January is the coolest and quietest month to do the trek, with temperatures at night going as low as anywhere between minus 18 and minus 20 degrees. Also on the same trek as me were three girls, one from New England, USA, one from Dublin and the other from another part of the UK. We had two Nepalese guides as well, the main one called Ram, but the name of the second one escapes me now. As I mentioned earlier, porters will carry the heavy bag with up to three 10 kilogram bags being carried by each porter. You'll be off trekking on the first leg of your journey, usually within an hour of arriving at Lukla, unless you've booked a stay night in Lukla first. The first leg of the journey is a three to four hour trek, about seven and a half kilometers to a village called Fak Ding. And unusually, this leg is a descent of around 200 meters overall, with Lukla being at an altitude of 2,860 meters and Fak Ding being around 2,640 meters. As for the rest of the trek, overnight accommodation is in what you call local tea houses. These are mountain lodges that offer basic rooms and food they're very thin, and as it can become very cold at night, there is a central burner in the middle of the main dining room. This is where everyone sits around after an evening meal to enjoy a chat, meet other trekkers, or even play cards. Due to the cold, there was no running water for a shower for the whole trek, so keeping clean was done with the use of baby wipes. A very popular meal on these treks is dal bart, which is usually made up of steamed rice, potatoes, vegetables, lentils, pulses and coriander. Tea houses have other amenities too, like the option of buying snacks, charge up your gadgets and some even have basic Wi-Fi, but there is usually an extra cost to using their Wi-Fi. Going up to the room at bedtime, I would take a Nalgene flask of boiling water to bed with me and put it inside my sleeping bag because it was absolutely freezing. In the water, I put a water purification tablet in, the safety of the water can be unreliable. This purified water would be my drinking water for the following day. I did however make a schoolboy error on the first night as I'd left my toothpaste and baby wipes out on the windowsill and in the morning they had both frozen solid. After rising early and having some breakfast on the second day we set off around 9am for Namsh Bazaar which sits at an altitude of 3,440 metres on the slopes of an arch-shaped mountain with stunning views of the surrounding peaks. This is another seven and a half kilometre leg and follows the stunning Dud Cozy River and negotiating several suspension bridge, including one of the highest in the world, the Hillary Suspension Bridge. This town is called the capital of the Sherpas and is famous for yak, cheese and butter. It also has shops, bars, outdoor shops and even a nightclub although that was closed when we were there. On this leg, I could definitely feel a distinct decrease in energy and the walk became a little laboured. I did feel a little embarrassed by this, especially when seeing porters carrying huge loads on their backs. This is a common way of transporting goods up the valley and porters are paid by how many kilograms they carry. As you can imagine, they aren't paid very much and they don't have health insurance. They also usually take with them a stick with a makeshift seat on it so that they can periodically take a very short rest. This life is brutal for them and isn't restricted just to men. We stayed for two nights at Namsh Bazaar so as to acclimatise and on the second day we took a walk up to the Tenzing Norgay statue and visited the Sherpa Culture Museum which is absolutely fascinating. Day four was the 9.2 kilometre walk to Tenboche which sits at around 3,860 metres. This included a steep climb up to the village which was very slow and heavy going as the air was starting to thin. Tengboche is also famous for the Buddhist monastery which is the largest Sherpa monastery in Nepal. We did watch a Buddhist chanting ceremony there and we were required to sit very quietly and weren't allowed to take any photos. At the time I wasn't really sure of the meaning of the ceremony but it was fascinating nonetheless. Day 5 was the longest leg, a 10.8 km walk to Dingboche, and day 6, the 8.4 km walk to Lobuche. This particular leg was very interesting as we saw helicopter evacuation take place due to altitude sickness. 
and this really brought home the dangers of altitude sickness to us and before arriving at Lobuche we passed through the Thukla Memorial. This memorial site is there to commemorate the dozens of climbers that have lost their lives over the years. Climbing Mount Everest includes some very famous names. It's on arrival at Lobuche where I really started to feel a bit unwell with altitude sickness. We're now approaching 5,000 metres and I felt quite lucky that other than feeling a bit heavy legged and tired on the trip to this point, I hadn't really felt unwell. The feeling for me was a little bit like having flu symptoms and it was at this point that I took my first altitude sickness tablet and that actually worked wonders and really quickly and by the time I went to bed I was starting to feel a little bit better. Day 7 was the shortest 4.3 kilometre walk to Gorak Shep which sits at about 5,140 metres. This is the last night stop before the final push to Everest Base Camp the following morning which is another short 3.4 kilometre walk to base camp. The final push to base camp is surreal as the Kumbu Icefall comes into view and this famous site becomes recognisable from the many clips of it on the news, documentaries and movies. Deserted of climbers as we were there before the climbing season, we stood around freezing cold and sucking in the oxygen at 5,360 metres. It was hard to believe that many famous climbers had stayed in this spot, some of them dying in avalanches. For 20 minutes or so we posed for photographs and savoured the moment of reaching one of the most famous spots on the planet. Although at base camp it's not possible to see the summit, this still remains one of the most amazing moments of my life. After that we headed back to Gorak Shep for a night before heading back to Lukla and after a four day trek back on a slightly different route we reached Lukla feeling on top of the world and ready for the rest of our trip to Pokhara. Oh, my God.